My parents are both Christian. I was baptized maybe in early high school and convinced that the gospel was true and I needed to live my life to Jesus. But shortly after, I think because of influences in school, there were a lot of elements of complacency that I experienced in my faith. And then I met my husband, Dan. I was compelled by his faith to reconsider and evaluate my own. What I saw when I first met her to who she was just a couple years later was just a dramatic difference and a dramatic change. And that made me just so confident thinking about, all right, you know, what if I could know this person and be closest person for the next decade, the next two, three, you know, the rest of my life. Dan and I grew closer and grew a companionship got married, and throughout the time of our marriage and relationship, we knew that going overseas was something that we wanted to do. I think in my heart, I recognized that there were areas of spiritual just inadequacy and lapse that I had. And talking to Dan, I saw something different. Dan's way of, of teaching and, and influencing people was very much a day-to-day -day in people's lives all the time, and all hours of the day. And so that was definitely a lifestyle change that was really different than what I expected. Chapter six, Papa God, Wede Na Evan. Now you one grand, not God. When we were first aware of a potential need in Sierra Leone, when both of us were there and we were talking with the people and studying with them and just getting to know them, I think both of us were just touched by the eagerness that they had to, to learn and grow, the deep desire they had for God's Word. Thought about it from a distance, but when we actually think about, okay, we're going to a place, that doesn't have the same health care you know, that we have there, that there's more exposure to disease, viruses, and more health risks, it becomes more real. I mean, we've asked ourselves, why would we go? Why should we go? What if something happens? Hmm, I don't want to be dramatic about it but it was uh, probably one of the worst, most miserable nights I've, I've had. Um, had these shakes and chills. We took my temperature to 104.5. Things got a little bit dark and a little bit um, emotional. Even for Sony and I, as we're trying to think about what to do. On the drive to Freetown today, some pretty, pretty dark thoughts and emotions were running through my mind, and been been crying a lot. Just uh, it's been one of the most testing weeks of my life. I think this experience revealed some kinks in my armor and my faith, and I intend wholeheartedly to to learn from them and to grow from this experience. Down the tube and into Eden's body to fix her problems. Yeah. Couldn't be more thankful for Sonia. She's just taken amazing care of me. I'm so thankful for, for Sean and for Abby. Reich, our good friends and our co-workers here in Sierra Leone, enabled Sonia to be able to then take care of me. If risk and if health and safety were the number one priority and God intended it to be the number one priority, then Jesus would never have left heaven. The apostles would never have fulfilled the Great Commission. There's a knowledge that Jesus has about me and about what I do and where I live. And that just reminds me, no matter how lonely it gets at times or how difficult or how scared or how challenging it can be, 
knowing that the Lord knows that and is aware of that, it brings courage. I'm Craig. And I'm Stu, and we're the founders of Appian Media. We really hope that you've enjoyed the content that you've just seen. This was only made available through the generous donations of so many of you. We believe that the world should have biblically accurate, visually engaging content about the Bible, and it should be free for everyone. We would encourage you to visit the membership page of appianmedia.org and consider becoming a reoccurring member. Everything that you donate to Appian Media is tax deductible. However you decide to donate, we really appreciate your support. 